Flat Earth Proof 20 More Experiments While there are many experiments one can easily do to simply verify that the flat, motionless plane we live on is not round or spinning, here are some experiments which are a bit more decisive, challenging current scientific models. To begin, the Michelson-Morley experiments, in which a beam of light was split and then sent in two directions, one along the alleged rotation of the Earth and one perpendicular to it, and then onto a film on which any interference would be recorded, measuring the difference in speed traveled by the two beams. However, no interference was detected. The Sanyak experiment also split a beam of light, but measured its interference whilst traveling opposite directions along the edges of a rotating turntable. Instead of noting an oscillating interference pattern, as expected on a rotating Earth, one beam was found to be traveling consistently longer than the other, denoting a stationary Earth. This critical discovery had to be concealed by the scientific establishment, so the fitzgerald lorentz contraction was concocted, claiming with no justification that the beam of light traveling in the direction of Earth's rotation became shorter and therefore the light traveled less distance. There was no basis for such an explanation other than the desperate attempt to excuse away these critical findings. In addition to the previously mentioned experiments, Airy's failure, in which George Airy failed to have to adjust his telescope due to his presumption of a moving Earth, while relatively there is no way to tell whether the Earth or stars are actually moving. By filling a telescope with water, the starlight entering the telescope is slowed greatly, and in order to still view the starlight on a rotating ball Earth, an adjustment to the angle of the telescope would be necessary. But if the stars are rotating, no adjustment is necessary. Though George Airy expected a necessary adjustment of 30 seconds of an arc, he failed to mark even so much as a single second's adjustment, proving that the telescope, and thus the Earth, was stationary. Further exhibiting a stationary Earth is the Red Bull Stratosphere Dive, in which Felix Baumgartner, after ascending over New Mexico for over three hours, should have landed over 3,000 kilometers west into the Pacific Ocean, but Felix landed 70 kilometers east from his takeoff point literally flying in the face of the ball Earth allegedly rotating at over a thousand kilometers per hour at that latitude. It also serves to point out that vertically fired cannonballs should all fall significantly west, but they always fall back down no more than two feet from the cannon, many times falling directly back into the muzzle. Further, on a spinning ball Earth, north and south facing cannons would have to establish a control while eastwardly fired cannonballs would travel significantly farther, with west firing cannons covering the shortest distances. But regardless of direction and what some people claim, bullets and cannonballs always cover the same distances and never curve due to the so-called Coriolis effect. So investigate the subject for yourself and ask questions.